Good day everyone. I'm glad that you have the opportunity uh, at this time now just to open up uh, the Word of God uh, with me and we'll see what we can uh, learn from uh, the Holy Scriptures. We are going to be doing things a little bit different. I am actually going to try and give you two messages uh, today. So we'll do the first one now and then we'll have a bit of a break, have a bit of a breather and then I'll intend to, to do the next message for you as well. This first message is going to probably be a little bit more uh, teaching and then our second message will continue our theme on how we ought to be uh, living uh, the Christian life uh, while we are in lockdown. And that applies to you folk even more so now uh, as a result of um, uh, your local uh, government there out there in Blaney uh, bringing in, I think it's a, a one week uh, lockdown uh, for you folk. Uh, the virus uh, found its way uh, out there. I was uh, hearing in the news this past week. So isn't it uh, amazing uh, that the Lord in his foreknowledge and knew exactly what was going to, to take place. And our last couple of messages that we've been looking at, how to live the Christian life in lockdown, and then all of a sudden uh, you folk out there get, get locked down uh, at least uh, for a week or so. And it's as if the Lord was already uh, giving you some uh, preparation from his word, uh, wisdom from his word, and, and, and just uh, preparing uh, for uh, this past week or so that you have, or I suppose when you come into the middle of this week, it will be a, a complete week uh, of lockdown. But I do hope that the Word of God is uh, is helping you uh, during this time. So in this particular uh, message now, I want to just uh, give you some things uh, from the Scriptures, and I don't intend to be too long when it comes to, to this teaching, but again, we'll just see how the Lord leads us and guides us. I have a number of uh, references written down that I would like to get through. But we'll just see how we go uh, with time. Uh, at the same time, I, I, I didn't really want to uh, teach about this uh, particular topic. I it was kind of pressed upon my heart yesterday afternoon uh, when I was sent a, sent a text message. And it was just a, just a text message in regards to all those uh, riots that were taking place uh, there in Sydney. And I'll call them riots because that's exactly what they were. Uh, they weren't uh, uh, protests, uh, they were riots that were taking place in the heart of our city, as well as I believe in, in Melbourne uh, as well. And when I did a little bit of uh, further research, I, I found out that uh, this was something that was planned pretty much to do all around the world in regards, I think it was world freedom or, or something like that. And just for, for people to, to go out into the streets, into their local city, to gather as a group and pretty much just, uh, just uh, they'll use the word protest. Uh, they may have had those intentions to protest to start off with, uh, but it always turns into, into rioting. So I, I don't want to, in, in this particular uh, teaching, uh, attack those people. At the end of the day, those people are, are, are unsaved and they have no authority, all authority. They just do that which is right uh, in their own eyes. They have no hope, they have no peace, which we have, which is found in Jesus Christ. But uh, what I want to center this particular teaching on is uh, is what I realized uh, yesterday, definitely in Sydney in particular, there were Christians out there in the midst of these uh, riots and uh, protests taking place. And actually, I have to rephrase that because I'm not going to describe them as Christians because a Christian would not be in that situation. A Christian would not be participating in those riots in any way. Uh, they may be saved and uh, we'll say that they're saved, uh, but we're not going to call them Christians. There's a difference in, in, the, in the Holy Scriptures when it comes to describing a saved individual and, and a Christian. We're told in the book of Acts that the the disciples were first called Christians uh, at Antioch, and a disciple is someone who is willing to deny themselves, to deny themselves, to de deny their desires, to deny uh, what uh, they uh, desire to do, and uh, follow the ways or follow the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those folk out there yesterday that were uh, rioting, uh, they were protesting, however you want to describe it, because it, it turned into rioting in our streets uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, they were not Christians. Uh, they were saved individuals, uh, but they're not Christians. If anything, I think um, the police commissioner uh, described them as, uh, as buffets. All right, and obviously you'd expect that from those that are unsaved. You'd expect that from those that uh, do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. But those that claim to be saved, those that name the name of Christ, the scriptures say that those that name the name of Christ, let them depart 
from iniquity. You know, I didn't see that taking place there yesterday. And, uh, you know, like I said, the commissioner called them, them buffets. Uh, I, I read in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that the Apostle Paul was, uh, in his letter to the church at Corinth, uh, he was he was writing to them concerning the resurrection because they, they came to a point where, where they no longer believed in the resurrection, uh, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the resurrection uh, of the saints. And uh, the Apostle Paul called them fools. He, he called them fools there in the church because uh, they, they were walking uh, as, uh, as men. They were not uh, walking in the spirit. Uh, as a result of that, they were envying, they were, they were carnal, and as a result, heresies were among them. And one of those heresies were that they did not believe, uh, no longer believe in the, in the resurrection. And as a result of that, Paul called them, them, them uh, fools. Uh, the commissioner called the people out there buffets. Uh, I'll just call them a bunch of drips, okay? Because uh, there's something loose up there uh, that, that they don't understand when it comes to the Word of God and what they were participating in, in, in yesterday. All right, so I, I, I am a little bit uh, uh, fired up this morning when it comes to this particular uh, uh, teaching. And, and you'll see why. Because the Scriptures are very clear uh, on this matter. And uh, the Scriptures uh, ought to be uh, all authority. We've talked about that in, in our study of the Holy Scriptures. And you have these drip heads out there yesterday claiming to be Christians. They're not, not Christians, like I said. They may be saved individuals. And they're out there. What are they doing out there? They're joining hand in hands uh, with the heathen, uh, with the unsaved. And what sort of testimony is that uh, when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ? How do I know saved people were out there? Well, you may have seen uh, pictures yourself or may have seen it on the news, but I, I saw individuals out there holding uh, scripture signs. And uh, some of these scripture signs include, I wrote some of these down. There was a quotation there from the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 to 17. Uh, they quoted that on a placard uh, and that reference is in uh, talking about uh, the mark of the beast and they weren't, I don't believe they were necessarily saying the vaccine is the mark of the beast, but they were saying that uh, this is yet to come or this is on the horizon or it starts with a vaccine and then in due course it will end up being uh, the mark of the beast that uh, the government will be forcing uh, upon people. So they had that holding up that sign there. And uh, you know, the thing that bugged me so much is that they were quoting from the authorized version. You know, that, that, that really um, angered me, frustrated me. Uh, that they were quoting from, from the authorized version. They could have quite easily quoted from one of those uh, satanic versions, and we haven't got into that part of our study as of yet. But to quote from the authorized uh, version and, and to have that sign up there in the midst uh, of those rites, not only are you shaming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're shaming his word. You're shaming this book. And uh, we, we and the and Lord tells us in his word that he's uh, exalted his, his, his word higher above uh, uh, higher than his name in in the book of psalms uh there was also another a uh, phrase uh, on that particular sign and it said uh, repent and believe in the gospel repent and believe in the gospel that was their gospel message in the midst of it all right i'm not going to get get into that particular portion of their so-called gospel message but that's a false gospel now they were quoting from the book of uh, book of Mark chapter one, and that uh, uh, quotation that they took from Mark chapter one is in reference to the kingdom gospel that Jesus Christ and John the Baptist went about preaching in in, in their earthly ministry. So not only are they quoting from the authorized version, but they 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 they're, uh, preaching a false gospel uh, there from uh, Mark chapter one as well. Not that's not the gospel we preach today. Repent and, and believe in the gospel, right? But that's a message for another time. But then I saw another sign, another sign someone was holding that said, uh, Jesus saves. All right. And again, so this sign was in, in the midst of, of all these other um, buffets, as the commissioner calls them, uh, holding uh, all these, all these uh, other uh, anti-lockdown signs, all these anti-vaccination signs. And I, I just got angry. You know, I saw this thinking, what are saved individuals doing mixing with unsaved individuals protesting in the streets of Sydney. You've got these ones holding these uh, these signs concerning lockdowns, vaccinations, and, and goodness knows what else. And then you've got this drip head here holding a sign that says Jesus saves. You know, that, that should show you, hang on a minute, something doesn't line up over here. And I'll show you how it doesn't line up because we're going to go to our all authority uh, to find the answer to the question which I've entitled this particular uh, teaching to write 
or not, to write or not, what saith uh, the scriptures. So let's go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And let's have a look what saith the scriptures when it comes to comes to this matter of uh, rioting. Romans 13 and look at verse number 13. Now, straight away, and I haven't uh, taught you about this uh, before in the scriptures, but uh, we might uh, touch on it uh, in our study on the Holy Scriptures. But uh, the Lord, not only does he have particular words in, in their rightful place in, in passages and in verses in his word, but also the numbers as well. The Lord uh, made, it, made it fit to have the, the, the verse numbers exactly where he intended them to be for a purpose. And again, it shows us that God's hand is upon this book because you look at Romans chapter 13 and verse 13, the number 13 in the authorized version uh, gives, us a, gives us a thought or gives us a, an idea of rebellion. And you'll see where the number 13 or derivatives of the number 13 um, line up or are found in the scriptures, not all the time, but the majority of the time, there's an idea of, uh, of rebellion uh, behind that because of that number 13. And we look at Romans 13, 13, and that's what we, let's have a look what we find here in Romans 13, 13. Now, this particular message, like I said at the beginning, this is not directed toward those that are unsaved. I already made that clear that, look, they, they know no better, all right? They're, they're just uh, doing that which is right in their own eyes, and they have no hope. They have no assurance. Uh, they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't know his word. So how else would you expect them to, to react in, in these times that uh, we find ourselves in? But for those that are saved, no, nah, sorry, you got no excuse. The scripture is very clear. And this is this message, I know it's not directed to, to you folk out there in Blaine, because I know you folk weren't out, weren't out there in, in Sydney. But I want you to see, when you see this stuff on the news, when you see, oh, a, a, a so-called saved individual there holding a uh, holding a scripture sign. I want you to see what the Word of God says about this, so you can look at that and see that yes, that is contrary to what God says in His words. Romans thirteen and look at verse number thirteen. Paul writing here to believers. He's writing to saved individuals. Romans thirteen verse thirteen. What is his command here in this verse? He says, let us walk honestly as in the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day. What you saw yesterday, did you see saved individuals walking honestly? Did you see that in the footage that you may have seen on the news or in pictures you may have seen? He said, let us walk honestly as in the day. Look what he says now, not in rioting not in rioting. Haven't they read what the scriptures say? Isn't that clear? Doesn't Paul make it crystal clear for the saved individual that we're not meant to have anything to do with what was taking place in Sydney yesterday or in Melbourne or in other parts around the world if there, if there were saved individuals involved in that? He says, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting. And what did you see going on yesterday? rioting taking place and again romans chapter 13 verse number 13 and if you want to try and find that verse in uh, some of the satanic versions you'll find that that word writing has been taken out and it's been replaced with something else so only in your authorized version do you find the word writing here now that those particular individuals that was holding that that sign that were quoted from the authorized version how come they didn't read this verse here how come they didn't read, let us walk honestly as in the day? It says, not in rioting. Not in rioting. You know why? Because they're walking in the flesh. Just like the church at Corinth, they were walking in their carnality. And as a result of that, there was strife. Uh, there was uh, envy taking place. And look what verse 14 says. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh. They weren't walking in the spirit, just walking in the flesh. Hence why they did not put on the Lord Jesus Christ as commanded to there in verse number 14. Look, at another passage here. Now, I'm not just going to show you one verse here. This, this, the scriptures are crystal clear when it comes to this. Second uh, Peter chapter 2. Look at verse number 9. Look what it says here in Second Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. It says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly 
out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment uh, to be punished. Now, there is a prophecy uh, in this uh, passage that we're about to read, uh, but at the same time, I am going to try and draw out some practical applications uh, for us today uh, just to, to line up with what Paul's command there in Romans 13 uh, and verse 13 stated. But look what he says here in verse number 10. He says, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, those that walk after the flesh, can Christians walk after the flesh? Yes, they can. And we'll, we'll show you that a little bit later. And this is exactly what these saved individuals were doing yesterday. They were walking after the flesh. And you'll see now, as a result of walking after the flesh, what some of the fruits are produced when you walk after the flesh and not walking after the Spirit. It says, which, are, which walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Look what it says, and despise. Despise who? Despise governments. That's what that was all about yesterday, despising uh, the, the, the state government and the, and the federal government and uh, these, uh, these laws that, that, that they're bringing into, into play uh, upon us uh, as a group of people. It says that these people that walk after the flesh, says they despise government, it says they're presumptuous, are they? They're self-willed. You know, we talked about that at the beginning. They're, they're not yielded to the spirits. They're, they're, they're doing the desires and will of their own hearts. And the scriptures make it very clear the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. The Bible says that a fool trusteth in his own heart. They're self-willed. The will comes from the heart. It says they're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. You know, those that are in authority, uh, the prime minister, uh, the premier of our state. It says, whereas angels which are greater in power and might bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. It says, but these as natural brute beasts, so look how the Lord describes them here. And again, I understand the, the, the prophetic side of this passage. He says, Made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. It says, And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that count it pleasure. They that count it pleasure to do what? As they that count it pleasure. Verse 13. Oh, look what pops up here now. Did you see that? What verse are we in? We're in verse number 13. Coincidence? <laughs> no coincidence with this book. Verse 13, just like in Romans 13, 13, we find ourselves in, in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 13, it says, that count it pleasure to do what? To riot in the what? In the daytime. Didn't you see that taking place yesterday in Sydney? Didn't you see that taking place with saved individuals there in Sydney? And it matches Romans 13, 13, because he, Paul told us to walk honestly as in the day, and not to be rioting. And over here, Peter gives us the, the same message that there are these people, certain individuals that walk after the flesh, they count it a pleasure to riot in the daytime. Verse number 13. What is that? That's just rebellion. Rebellion, rebellion, and rebellion. Rebellion towards uh, the words of God. Now, some of these drip heads are going to say that, oh, well, we were out there, we were a, a light for Jesus Christ, and uh, the scripture signs that we were holding, uh, someone could have got saved as a result of us being out there, holding those signs. Someone could have got saved. Yeah, someone could have got saved. I agree with you when you make when you may make that statement. I've heard people make that statement before to justify their reasons for, for going out there and uh, uh, protesting, rioting uh, with, uh, with these unsafe folk. Someone may have got saved. Well, let's have a look what saith the scriptures once again are all authority. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, look at verse number 7. Paul says this, For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? Now look what he says in verse number 8, and not rather... And look what he says in brackets here. He says, as we be slanderously reported, and some affirm that we say that in, so in Paul's day, there was some saying that Paul was preaching a particular message, and this is the particular message that Paul was preaching. Let us do evil. So it's okay to do evil. It says that good may come whose damnation is just. Paul was being accused of teaching this message, which is contrary uh, to the word of God. And we know he was not teaching this message at all. All it was was just the evil doers uh, making these false accusations against the Apostle Paul. Let us do evil that good may come. It says, whose damnation is just. Well, you know, that's how these 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 saved individuals try and justify their uh, participation in those riots yesterday. 
You know, it's okay to do evil. Well, if good comes from it, you know, we're out there, yes, we we're a part of the riots and everything. But if someone got saved from it, it was all worth it. Is that biblical? No, not biblical at all. You know, it's never right to do wrong. It is never right to do wrong in order to get a chance to do right. Uh, I'll say that again. It is never right to do wrong in order to get a chance to do right. You know, the scriptures are very clear. And uh, like I said, Paul was being accused of this as well. Let us do evil if good may come. So it, it's okay to go out and do evil as long as, as long as good comes from it. As long as someone got saved from it, that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, but you were doing evil being out there. Don't these, don't these drip heads read the scriptures? Don't they, don't they read the all authority, what the scriptures say on this matter? Go over to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28 and look at verse look at verse number 7. Now uh, again, I'm just going to use this verse as a, as a practical application for us in and where we're, what we're looking at when it comes to this particular teaching. Proverbs chapter 28 and look at verse number 7. It says, "Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son." It says, "But he that is a companion of righteous men shameth his father." All right, so I understand from the passage here, whoso keepeth the law, talking about the law being the word of God, and it says that he's a wise son, he's a companion of righteous men, it says shame with his father, and it's talking about his, his earthly father here. But I want you to see something practical from this verse when it comes to this idea of these, these saved individuals out there rioting, and there in Sydney yesterday. Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son. You know, you do what this book says, Romans 13:13 13, 13, as well as 2 Peter chapter 9 and verse 13 tells us we should not have anything to do with rioting. You know, in God's eyes, you're a wise son. You're a wise child of God. Whoso keep the Thor is a wise son. But look what he says now. But he that is a companion of righteous men. What were those people doing out there with those righteous men? They were hand in hand with them, marching down through the streets of Sydney. It says, he that is a companion of righteous men. What does he do? Shameth his father. Shameth his father. Can we use the word father here? Uh, I know it's in reference to an earthly father, but what about your heavenly father? What about your heavenly father? What about God, which is up in heaven? You know, keep the law, you're a wise son. But if you're a companion of righteous men, you bring shame upon the God of the Bible. You bring shame upon the God uh, of heaven. And you may want to check that verse out in the satanic versions as well, because righteous is, is taken out from that verse as well. Oh, why would they do that for? Why would they, why would these satanic versions take out the, the word righteous for once again from this passage? Ah, oh, there's another spirit about them, isn't there? Another spirit about them. Anyway, look at so go back to Romans now, Romans chapter two. I know it, I'm going fast and I'm going through a number of passages here uh, for us, but I said, there's a, there's a lot to say in a short amount of time. <laughs> Nothing new with me, is it? Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2. So here there's a companion of righteous men. It says, shameth his father. Bring shame. Bring shame upon uh, our heavenly father. Bring shame upon the, the God of this Bible. Being a companion. Being out there uh, with these righteous people. Uh, not righteous. Riotous. Okay? Riotous people. Uh, Romans chapter 2. Look at verse. Look at verse twenty-one. Now, this this is um, a situation which the Jews found themselves in, and the Apostle Paul here he is uh, uh, rebuking uh, the Jewish people. He says this in verse twenty-one. He says, "Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest not thyself." So they go about. They've got the law, and they go about teaching the law, but they're doing contrary to what they what they're teaching. It says, "Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest." Thou not thyself, thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? It says, Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. So they, they were they were boasting that yes, we 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 believe that uh, God gave us the law. We're the chosen people, and uh, God's given us uh, His law. He hasn't given it to any other nation. They're making their boast of the law, but at the same time, through breaking the law, what does it say that they're doing? It says they dishonor God. Well, isn't that exactly what these folk were doing yesterday? 
that they make their boast that yes, we are Christians, we are Bible believing Christians. I'm sure they say Bible believing Christians. But what does it say? With them being out there, what are they actually doing? They're breaking the law, and as a result of that, they're dishonoring God. Look at the next verse. For the name of God, it says there in verse 24, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. So just like the word of God was being blasphemed because those Jewish believers there were uh, were not um, adhering or not obeying what the, what the law says, they were saying, they were teaching it, but they weren't putting it into practice in their own lives. As a result of that, the Gentiles looked at it and think, what, you a bunch of hypocrites, a bunch of hypocrites. You, you're teaching something, but you're living something completely opposite. Well, what's the difference with these uh, saved individuals out there yesterday? Part of the riots, rioting, holding their scripture signs. And what were they doing? They, they are through, uh, it says, thou that makest thy boast of the law, it says, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. They were shaming their father, according to Proverbs chapter 28. They were dishonoring God, and as a result of that, just like with the Jewish believers, with these saved individuals, yes, say the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. Shame on those saved individuals. Shame on those drips that were out there yesterday holding those scripture signs, part of those protests, part of those riots, being a companion of those uh, riotous men. Shame on them. And that's from the Word of God. All right? I'm, I'm just giving you what the Word of God says on the matter. Look at, uh, where shall we go? Oh, I'll tell you one thing. I saw another sign there yesterday. I'll tell you what, go to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And uh, yeah, find your place over there. So in the midst of these uh, saved individuals holding these scripture signs, there are also a number of other signs. All right, and there are other signs regarding the vaccination, lockdown, and everything like that. But I noticed one other particular sign, and this is what this sign said. It said this, If a law is unjust, one is not only right to disobey it, one is obligated to do so. Wow. So you've got unsafe folk holding signs that had this message on there, which again, you would expect them to do so because they're just doing that which is right in their own eyes. They've got no all authority like these saved individuals ought to have. So they're holding a sign, if a law is unjust, one is not only right to disobey it, one is obligated to do so. And you've got a saved individual here holding a sign that says Jesus saves. Can't you see? Can't you see something's not right there? Can't you see that particular sign that that unsaved individual is holding is so contrary to the word of God? Are we told in the word of God that if a law is unjust, one is not only right to disobey it, one is obligated to do so? Is that the call of a Christian? Is that the call of a Bible-believing Christian? Well, what saith the scriptures? 1 Peter chapter 2, look at verse number 11. Peter says, Dearly beloved, who's he talking to? He's not talking to unsaved, he's talking to those that are saved. He's talking to those that name the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, those that take the title of a Christian. He says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your which war against the soul. He's reminding them right from the beginning, look, you are strangers and pilgrims in this world. As believers, this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. You know, this is not our final destination. We've got something else to look forward to up there in glory. We're strangers. We're pilgrims. And he says to them to abstain, have nothing to do with, stay clear of those fleshly lusts which war against the soul, including rioting, including being out there in the streets yesterday or any other future protests that are going to take place. Why? Look what he says in verse number 12. Having your conversation, not your speech, but your manner of life, you know, your character, the way you live your Christian life, having your conversation says, honest among the Gentiles. Did those saved individuals yesterday have an honest conversation amongst the Gentiles, amongst those unsaved individuals out there? Hell no, of course they didn't. It says that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may buy your good works, which they shall glor behold, glorify God in the day uh, of visitation. Was there any good works? No, there wasn't good works. There was those self-willed works. 
uh, walking after the flesh that we talked about. Look what verse number 13 says. Let me just remind you what that sign said. It said, if a law is unjust, lockdowns, mask wearing, uh, check-ins, whatever else you want to add to that. If a law is unjust, one is not only right to disobey it, one is obligated to do so. What saith the scriptures here in verse number 13? Peter says, submit yourselves to some ordinances of man. Is that what it says? That's not what it says. I was hoping that you were following with me. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man every ordinance so how can a saved individual be out there rioting protesting in the streets of sydney holding a sign that says jesus saves and then someone right next to them a, 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 someone who's uh, out there holding a sign that had that message there about disobeying uh, those unjust laws when the word of god is crystal clear submit yourselves he says to every ordinance of man why he gives the reason. He says, for the Lord's sake, for the Lord's sake, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Can you not do it for the Lord Jesus Christ? Can you not submit yourself to these ordinances for the sake of your heavenly Savior? It says, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Verse 15, for so is the will of God that with well-doing, it says, ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Verse 16, this is interesting. It says, as free. They're all out there talking about freedom and wanting to be free. Well, as believers, we are free. We're free as believers. We are free being believers in Jesus Christ. Freedom comes in Jesus Christ. That's where freedom comes. It says, as free. But look what he says here, and he makes it abundantly clear and and again you, you, you can't hide from the truth here of the word of god it says as free but it says and not using your liberty not using the liberty that you have not using the freedom that you have for a cloak of maliciousness what was taking place yesterday and i'm not saying that there, that those saved individuals out there were the ones that were were were, uh, were involved with those riots with the police and everything okay i don't know if those were saved individuals or they were unsaved or, or, or what they were all right, but you're out there being part of that. You're out there rioting with them. You know, you you may not necessarily be using your your fists and and all that, but you're a companion, and it brings shame to your heavenly Father. The Scripture said, it "says not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but how are you meant to use your freedom? How are you meant to use the liberty that you have in Christ? But as the servants of God, as a servant of God." As a servant of God, how can you be a good servant of God? Look at verse 13. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Verse 17, honor all men. He says, love the brotherhood, brotherhood, fear God and, uh, and honor the king. You know what you saw yesterday? You saw a bunch of saved individuals out there. And what were they doing? I'm sure one of the ordinances that uh, the government brought in was that there was uh, strict lockdowns in, and it's getting even more strict in different parts of uh, Greater Sydney even so now. But what you saw yesterday was a bunch of saved individuals out there. They were not using their, their freedom that they have in Christ or their liberty uh, for being a servant of God. They're using it as a cloak of maliciousness. They were rebelling against those uh, lockdown orders that have been uh, put into place uh, by our by our state governments. And what saith the scriptures when it comes to that? You know, the scriptures are very clear. Submit yourselves to every ordinance when it comes to lockdown. So why were they out there holding their scripture signs? I'm going to be a testimony for Christ. I'm going to be a voice for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to be a shining light for the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be a testimony for Christ? You want to be a shining light for the Lord Jesus Christ? Do what verse 13 says. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. You read about it there in Romans chapter 13, the first five verses or so as well. You know, not just here in what Peter says, but in what Paul says there, Romans 13. And here's a coincidence as well. We'll get back to this thought in a minute. We look, we start off in Romans 13, 13, about walking honestly, not rioting. And that verse is found in Romans chapter 13 there, when, uh, when Paul writes about uh, what a Christian's relationship ought to be uh, with the government. 
You know, the scriptures are abundantly clear. You can't miss it unless you're walking after the flesh and not after the spirit and being led by this book or are you being led by that which is right in your own eyes uh, as well. So that rebellion, rebellion against these lockdown orders, all those saved individuals out there rebelling, rebelling against the ordinance of man. And what saith the scripture concerning that? You're in First Peter chapter 2. Let's go back to Galatians chapter, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5, look at verse, uh, look at verse, look at verse number 18. He says, again, a message to believers. He says, but if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Are you being led by the Spirit? Were those saved individuals yesterday being led of the Spirit being out there? Or were they being led by the flesh? Well, let's have a look at what verse 19 says. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Some of the works of the flesh. So this is how you know if you're being led by the Spirit or if you're being led by the, by the flesh. If you're led by the Spirit, you'll see verse 22 onwards. tells you about that fruit of the Spirit. But the works of the flesh, if you're led by the flesh, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Those on to verse 21 as well. But I want you just to see one particular work of the flesh here in verse number 20. It mentions witchcraft. Can a Christian or can a saved individual be a participant in witchcraft? Well, according to the scriptures, yes, they can. But I want to show you a deeper meaning when it comes to this idea of witchcraft. Look at, uh, go back to the Old Testament now. 1 Samuel chapter 15. So if you're walking after the flesh, self-willed, not walking after the Spirit, you are going to find yourselves participating in the works of the flesh. One of those works of the flesh includes what? Witchcraft. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Look with me at verse number 22. This is uh, in um, the nation's history. Saul is currently king of the nation of Israel. He is disobedient uh, <clears throat> to the words of God through the prophet Samuel. And uh, you should read that chapter because, uh, again, just like we saw um, these uh, these drips out there yesterday holding their scripture signs, you know, they're trying to do a good thing. Yeah, but in, in, trying to do a good thing, but in, in, in disobeying the word of God at the same time. This is exactly what Saul did. He, he thought that, oh, well, I'll do the right thing. I'll do a good thing, a sacrifice to, to God, offer sacrifices to God. But in result of him doing that, he was disobeying what God told him to do, disobeying the words of God. You read about that in the whole chapter. But look at verse number 22. Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? What is God more important, more interested in, in obeying what he says or in doing, uh, doing the so-called religious works or spiritual works? Behold, he says, to obey is better than sacrifice. So those drips, yes, they out there holding those scripture signs. It would have been better for them to obey what the word of God says, being in subjection to every ordinance of, uh, of man there when it comes to those lockdowns. It would have been better for them to obey, to be in their homes, to be locked down as the scriptures are commanding them to do instead of being out there holding those scripture signs and, and doing those works, um, so-called religious spiritual works. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Why? Because in verse 23, we're looking at what uh, witchcraft is, is, is there from Galatians chapter 5, verse 23 says, For rebellion, for rebellion is as the sin of what? Of witchcraft. Can you see how saved individuals, when they walk in the flesh and are not led by the Spirit, when they rebel against the uh, command or the ordinance of man and we're just looking at this context here of the lockdown they were all out there those saved individuals rioting protesting holding their scripture signs they were rebelling and what does god's word liken rebellion unto he says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft so according to this book according not according to me but according to the words of god all those saved individuals that were out there rioting and protesting holding those scripture signs they were not doing god's work they were not giving bringing god glory the opposite they were blaspheming the name of god amongst the gentiles romans chapter 2 they were shaming their heavenly father and as a result they were participating in the sin of 
witchcraft due to their rebellion to the words of God when it came when it comes to the the command that uh, the government brought in that uh, those particular people ought to be in lockdown you can't get it any clearer than this here in the word of God let's finish off in one more verse 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 now when you have seen footage of what was taking place yesterday you would have seen uh, violent behavior you would have seen wild behavior I watched some videos and the language of some of these individuals that were coming out of their lips was uh, was absolutely disgusting and again this was from unsaved individuals which you'd expect they were, they were swearing using all sorts of uh, colorful language uh, if you saw uh, footage there would have, you would have noticed there would have been disorder there would have been a confusion, there was a disturbance, there was tumult, there was a, an uproar. Uh, that's how you would describe what was taking place yesterday. And would you describe all those things that we've just mentioned as uh, uh, righteous fruit or unrighteous fruit? Would you describe those things as, as light or would you describe those things as, as, as darkness? Well, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and look at verse number 14. The Apostle Paul, making it crystal clear once again, he says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What were these saved people doing yesterday being yoked together with these unbelievers? The command is clear. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, hand in hand, out there, marching, protesting, rioting through the streets of Sydney against all these uh, uh, rules and regulations that have come into play. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Paul says, For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? Well, the answer is obvious. None. You cannot have fellowship righteous with unrighteous. It doesn't work. So these people are meant to be righteous. These people are meant to be naming the name of Christ, meant to be obedient to the word of God. What are they out there being with these unrighteous folk out there, participating in these riots? What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And he says, what communion hath light with darkness? Now, again, the answer to that question is none. You can't have communion with light and darkness. And that's exactly what you saw taking place yesterday. The command is clear. Be ye not unequally yoked together, he says, uh, with unbelievers. You know, I know I probably sounded a little bit um, worked up uh, over this, looking at some of these verses, but it really stirred my heart yesterday when I saw some of these things taking place. And as I mentioned earlier, you'd expect it from those that are unsaved. But those that claim to be saved, shame on you. Shame on you. Get back to the book. Stop walking after the flesh and get back to the book and read what the all authority says and start following what the word of God says when it comes to this matter. You have no right to be out there. I don't know. I'm not talking to you folk out there in Blaney because you folk aren't there. I'm just <clears throat> making it clear here from the word of God when it comes to what we saw yesterday out there uh, with those uh, uh, saved individuals out there uh, on the streets of Sydney. I challenge them. And I know there's no way I can make contact with them. I'm not interested in making contact. I don't even know what church they are associated with or what denomination they were or who they were or anything like that. But I challenge them to find an example or find <clears throat> just find one example in the scriptures where the Apostle Paul or, the, or even the Lord Jesus Christ encouraged the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ or the, the Apostle Paul encouraged uh, the, the believers or the Apostle Peter either in their letters encouraged them to go out and to go and uh, protest and to go and riot against the, so, uh, against the unjust uh, laws uh, of, the, of the government uh, of their day. You know, you will not find an example. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was crucified, his whole trial was unjust. His whole trial was unlawful. And, and you know, remember when they were in the garden there? 
Jesus was there in the garden and, and the soldiers and uh, Judas came to come and take him and Peter was there. He took out the sword. He was ready to fight. And what did Jesus say to Peter? He said, look, put up thy sword. Put it away. We're not here to fight. All right. You're not going to, to overthrow these soldiers. You're not going to overthrow uh, the government of the time. No, I'm here for a purpose. I'm going to leave an example for you to follow. And uh, look what the Lord Jesus Christ uh, went through. Everything that he went through when it came to his crucifixion was unjust, was unlawful. But what did he do? He knew what it was to submit. He knew what it was to have that testimony. And that's the testimony we ought to follow in such a time like this. As they like to, as they say, Trips like to quote from the book of Esther that Esther was brought into the kingdom for such a time as like this. So it's 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 our responsibility as Christians for such a time like this to stand up. No, it's our responsibility as Christians for such a time like this to go to First Timothy chapter two and again to follow the commands of the Apostle Paul. First Timothy chapter two, and we'll finish up with this with with this uh, verse here for such a time as this. Yeah, it is for such a time like this. This is what you ought to be doing. This is what these uh, save trips ought to have been doing yesterday in their homes while in lockdown instead of out there on the streets rioting and protesting. 1 Timothy chapter 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, he says, be made for all men. He says, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. That's how we're meant to walk according to Romans 13, 13. Let us walk in honesty, not rioting. You know, so how do we do this? How are we going to lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty? By praying. Why didn't these saved individuals pray for their premier, Gladys Berejiklian? Why didn't they pray for their prime minister, uh, uh, Scott Morrison? How many prayers have been uttered up out of their hearts for their leaders? According to this verse, if they spend as much time as they did out there writing and protesting, putting their signs together as they did in prayer, maybe things would be a little bit different. Maybe maybe things wouldn't be the way they are. I don't know. I, that's just, 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 just a personal thought of mine. But the scriptures are crystal clear here. Instead of being out there, use your time of lockdown to show the example of the Lord Jesus Christ, to show a testimony that, yes, you are a Christian, that you are a Bible-believing Christian, and follow this command. Pray. Pray for your leaders. Uh, I'm, same exhortation for myself as well. Pray for them. Pray that the Lord would give them wisdom in a situation like this. Pray that they would take Christian counsel, that they would take counsel from the Word of God. You know, if you do that, look at the look at to what we have here in verse number 3. If you do verses 1 and 2, it says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Saviour. You want to do something that's good and acceptable in the sight of God? No, don't go out there rioting and protesting. These lockdown laws, uh, these uh, check-ins and mask wearing and everything like that. That's not, that's not good and acceptable in the sight of God. What's good and acceptable in the sight of God is praying for your leaders. Praying for the Premier, praying for the Prime Minister. And I encourage you folk, I encourage myself as well to do that. But next time you see one of these organised riots take place out there in Sydney, remember what these verses say. Remember what this all authority says when it comes to that. And just look at that and uh, look at that and just uh, uh, compare it to what God's Word says. And uh, let uh, the Word of God be esteemed. Let the Word of God be, be raised up. Let the Word of God be the, be the, be the source that we look to, that we, that we seek to follow in such a time like this, and not uh, the example of these uh, saved groups out there uh, blaspheming the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, shaming uh, the Heavenly Father. So I, didn't, I said I didn't want to be too long, but we're already pushing 50 minutes or so. So I'll stop. That's off my chest now. All right, so our next message, which I'm just going to have a bit of a break or so, and then I'll put a, a, another message together and we'll just continue. I'll give you something more practical when it comes to continuing to live the Christian life uh, in lockdown. But I hope that's been a help to you. I hope that uh, through the Word of God, your eyes have been enlightened to the truth when you see that nonsense uh, taking place uh, in our streets. So um, I, I hope uh, that uh, uh, you'll, you'll log back on and see the next, uh, see the next message as well.